Okay, commissioners. Um, any discussion of the minutes from the previous meeting? I have none. Nor do I. I'll move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And it's unanimous. On to the calendar. Any discussion of the previous calendar? None from me. Nor do I. Then we move on to previously signed documents. Uh, discussion? Commissioners? Move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Uh, next, I believe we have an update on the registry of deeds. I think Judy is on. Judith, are you with us? Yes, I'm not sure. Can you hear me? We can hear you, Judith, but I prefer to see you as well. Um, okay, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> my my app. My laptop wasn't connecting, so I had to use my iPad and. So we'll just imagine you, but we can. Hear oh, you. oh, there you, you are. are. There you okay. are. Nice to see you. Phew. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you. I appreciate your patience with me. I'll start off by talking about uh, first quarter revenues uh, so far this year. Uh, so the first quarter of 2021, um, we're off to a strong start. Uh, January was flat, but March and February ended very strong. This is unusual because first quarter, we're typically really slow at the registry. And we haven't seen that so far, you know, this year. So revenue to the county shows an increase of $80,000 compared to the same time period last year in 2020. Uh, there is a you know, increase in both the real estate transfer tax commission and the recording fees. The other significant item to talk about is uh, year to date dock accounts. So, so far through the end of March, we recorded 4,643 documents. This is up by over 1,200 documents for the same time period last year. So these documents primarily consist of the three biggies, the mortgages, discharges of mortgage, and deeds. Just to put that 1,200 number in a proper perspective, for the entire year of 2020, our increase in dock accounts were up 2,600. So we're already up 1,200 just in the first quarter. So that is gonna impact, you know, the 2021 budget at some level. Um, if this current pace keeps up, then there will be a shortfall in that uh, recording line item. Um, right now I do have uh, money left over from a, vacant position um, in the registry that, you know, that money can be used to offset whatever shortfalls, but I'll have to continue to monitor that line closely moving forward. So electronically received documents uh, remain steady at about 68%. As far as uh, Budgets year to date, the budget expenses, I believe we're right on track at 25%. The other significant news is that we do have um, the position that was vacant in our office filled. Um, the deeds office was very fortunate that we had a number of very qualified candidates who applied. So uh, we feel in really good shape now with the staff moving forward. So the other item to talk about is the, um, we went live with our new search engine uh, called Laredo and Ava. We did that the 1st of January. Uh, those search products replaced the Connor and Connor search that has been in place in the registry for about 30 years. So these new search products are really good because they address cybersecurity they eliminate the use of the outdated Java platform. And more importantly, they're secure and they are supported. So the feedback that I've gotten from title searchers in the public has been very positive. 
it's a much user friendly service. Um, the public, especially, I think, is is adapting well to the Ava public search because it allows them to use the site from their home and they can actually download their documents that are of interest to them without coming into the registry. Uh, the other upgrade that was provided is to the cities and towns in Belknap County. We have to furnish those uh, towns and cities with the transfers for uh, tax purposes. And so what's happened is, is that there is a, a new program called Monarch that was installed at the local level for each city and town. Transfers are, are automatically downloaded into that file every day in a PDF form, which gives the cities and towns the opportunities to save the file, print it, move it, copy it, do whatever, but it's just a, a, lot, a lot better for, for everybody. And I think that's all the, the big items I wanted to talk about. Do you have any questions for me? Commissioners. I have none. Very nice report. And very encouraging. Thank Thanks. you. Judith, I do have one quick question for you. Yes. Uh, with respect to foot traffic to your office, um, to what extent has that been restored as opposed to the 100% prior to the pandemic? Well, the office is, is open to the public. Um, there's just uh, the certain criteria. They have to wear masks. I don't know how that'll be impacted after tomorrow night, but um, masks and screening at the front front uh, entrance, but the registry has been open to the public since June 15th. So we are there and available to help and assist the public if necessary. And we do get, do get you know, uh, people in, but just not at this, the, the levels pre-pandemic, for sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, commissioners? I do not. Thank you, Judy. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Nice presentation. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Be well. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, next up, we have contract authorization. This consists of three components. And Deborah, can you take us through, please? Um, Superintendent Cunningham is present, and he can talk about, he's virtually present. Uh, the first, the first one is a contract to amend the core services contract uh, that already exists uh, with Horizons Counseling. Hey, good evening, commissioners. How are you? Not too bad. Good. Hey, sorry I couldn't be there in person tonight. Uh, I was unavoidably uh, out. Um, so what you have here is an addendum. I met with um, Executive Director Jackie Abikoff uh, about a week ago. Um, to discuss our core services. And uh, Ms. Abikoff made a suggestion that for um, our core services that occur out in the public once inmates are released, that um, we might find some cost savings there um, if she were to bill uh, Medicaid for those services for, for the folks that are out of custody. Um, you know, so we looked at it. Um, it's not going to change our uh, program at all. It's not going to change the level of service. Um, it just uh, that case manager position that we were paying for the 32 hours a week. Uh, Director Abikoff is going to uh, bill um, outside um, sources for that position. And so uh, what this is, is it's an addendum to um, effective April 17th to drop that off of our uh, contract, which is in effect a $2,400 a month savings. Uh, to the county. Questions? I was just going to say because the contract is uh, more than $10,000, um, it requires the commissioner's authorization as opposed to the department head being able to sign it alone. Discussion. So I understand this. This is a, a savings of $2,400 a month, is what the contract changes. That's correct. I see no reason why not to move acceptance of the addendum. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank, Thank you, you commissioners. Be well. Yes. And then um, the 
the DNA. Nursing zone. Home Administrator Richardson is available to talk about the next two contracts. Shelly, how are you? Good. How are you? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you perfectly well. Thank you. Okay, great. The first contract that I have um, there is for the nursing facilities agreement. Um, it is the same hospice agreement that we've had right along since 2015. Basically, the issue um, is that um, Central New Hampshire VNA and Hospice of Laconia um, has now merged with Concord Regional VNA to um, become Granite VNA. So they had to redo the contract doing business as Granite. Um, nothing has, has changed. It still allows our, our residents to have choice for hospice services. They basically um, will come in and hospice does their own billing. They bill their Medicare A benefit and we still get the Medicaid room and board um, billing that we've done right along. So it, it has no, no change except for a name. So it's really just a semantic change, if nothing else. Re yeah, basically, yeah. Okay. Commissioners, questions, discussion? Move approval of the request. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Good. Thank you, Shelley. And the next, oh, go ahead. Next, I'm sorry, the next contract is for me also. It's um, to notify us that Concord Hospital is going to be taking over Lakes Region's um, lab services. As everybody knows, right now they're going to be, um, no, well, they're uh, in the process of bankruptcy, I believe. And because of this process, they have to put a temporary contract out to us, letting us know that we're still going to get the same lab services and pricing and the same service um, starting May 1st, um, but they will be known also as Concord Hospital Laconia and Franklin will be known as Concord Hospital Franklin. And the contract will take place starting May 1st for 120 days while they reorganize and um, probably look at how they will do future services and pricing um, and that will happen and we'll probably get notified again with what the rates will be and what services they will be able to provide. But as of right now, while they're going through this um, transition period, our service will not change from, from Lakes Region Hospital. So this looks like a reprise of the VNA turnover, yes? It's, it's change, you're changing in title. Uh, um, not, not basically. In for now. And it's for now. Time. Yeah, we're, we're still the 120 days going to get the same services till they revamp and, and reorganize. Okay. Any questions, commissioners? Any discussion? Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And it's unanimous. Okay. All right. Next up. We have a, a, a request a to benefactor to the county, a yes, donation. Right. Yes. Yes, I have um, the nursing home received a donation in the amount of $100 from one of our LNA staff members, um, Deb Poirier, and she's requested that she, the $100 donation go into the resident council fund for them um, to work with the recreation director and resident council vice president and president to work on a purchase that they might want. Uh, the board appreciates that generosity. Do we have a motion to accept? Sure, I'll move to accept as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you for that donation from Ms. Poirier. And uh, next up, we're looking for authorization of the LPN program, shall we? Yes, um, you should have a colored brochure and a flyer and a contract um, outlining what we would like to do to bring the LPN program to give some career advancement to our staff here. 
Um, the, it, it is uh, written down what the candidates need to be accepted into the program by um, River Valley Community College that will be having a satellite office up at Lakes Region Community College and with Belknap County. Um, we've kind of looked at, it's going to be uh, performance-based and have a successful interview with us. Also fill out the application for um, River Valley. They had, need to have a current New Hampshire um, assistant LNA license, CPR, uh, criminal background check, drug testing, proof of medical insurance. Um, I, I think I pretty much spelled everything out there. And what we would like to do, Belknap County's responsibility for the candidate would be that we would pay at the end the required course, taxes, exams, uniform um, for the applicant, which will round out to about $14,000 for the year. The program starts in January and it goes to December. Belknap County would pro provide health insurance for the candidate, the applicant that goes, and they would go to school for three days and we would pay two days um, so that they would be able to get 40 hours. Um, we also have requested here that they, during school vacations or breaks or holidays, that the expectation would be that the staff member, the candidate would work full time um, during those time frames. And then when they completed school, they would um, continue working for us, take their, their exams um, and work for Belknap County for 24 months and have um, their loan forgiveness that they would not have to pay us back for supporting them through school. I talked briefly about this um, last meeting and kind of was tasked to put together a flyer and a brochure and contract. So it's modeled after the LNA program that we've done and the MedTech program that we've done. Commissioners, this strikes me as a good vehicle for the county to bring healthcare talent to where it's needed. And obviously there's a need. What say you? I agree wholeheartedly. Absolutely, it seems like a great uh, program. Shelly, if I am, so to understand the cost piece of it, so this would be an FY 2022 budgetary expense that we would include in our budget process for next fiscal year? Um, they would start, yeah, they would start January 1st and I'm really not sure how much of schooling has to be paid ahead of time um, if they're required to pay for, I know they have an application fee that's $350. I do have some money in professional, uh, not professional um, development that uh, recruitment, nursing recruitment that maybe could cover some of that if we have to pay things before 2022. Okay. May I? An another thought we had talked about is um, the potential for the to use American Rescue Plan that was to cover the bulk of this program. We know the expenses are largely going to fall next year, mm -hmm. and we'll have that money. Um, we know we'll have the money sooner than that, but so that's really what we're. Uh, counting on is, okay. is getting that money and using that because workforce development is a clear um, allowable expense under that program. Right. There's your funding mechanism, commissioners. Yeah, hoping for that and hoping because we haven't gotten guidance yet on that money. So if, if we're able to, I think we're probably going to be able to use it because it is, some of it is sanctioned for workforce development. Any other questions or discussion <clears throat> on this authorization item? To what extent have, have the guidelines been finalized? They're not at all. They're not at all. We, we are hearing that we should have them um, mid-May. So we won't be spending anything with this until the guidelines are That's in right. place. Correct. Which we don't see coming, Hunter, until 
the funds are actually deposited. As Deb mentioned earlier in mid-May, I think that's that will coincide with <clears throat> some type of guidance. Of, of the um, general guidance they've already published, one of the uses is uh, workforce development for essential workers. So we're very confident this should be an easy fit. Seems to be a fit. Mm -hmm. Shelly, do you know what uh, enrollment deadline or when the enrollment deadline would be for uh, River Valley Community College to have? They start, uh, they start interviewing in September. And she told, uh, I talked with the instructor and she's hoping to, by November, um, have everybody in place because they need to take an acceptance test. Um, so they'd be ready to go for January and have physicals and criminal background checks and all that. Thank you. You're welcome. Further discussion? I'm not seeing none. I move that the board uh, authorizes this program. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have the VOCA grant. This is the county attorney. Mr. Right. Livnois, nice to see you, sir. Nice to see you in person. Thank you. Good evening. Yes, I've, I've had both my shots to this point. So <clears throat> I feel comfortable coming back in person. So right. That's exciting. So thank you for, for hearing from me tonight. Uh, I'm here requesting the reauthorization or the reapproval of our VOCA grant. This is a grant that our office has uh, maintained from the, from the federal government for many years. It pays uh, for my two victim witness advocates who are really uh, central parts of our operation. We could not do what we do without them. And so it's a very meaningful money for our office. Um, under the terms of this grant, the, uh, it, it funds both of those positions. Um, the federal government will be paying us $85,226.40. Our match of that is $21,308. So for $21,000, we're able to uh, basically afford two full-time employees because of this grant. Um, as I said, it's a grant we've been doing for many years. This is just a reauthorization of it. So I would ask for your approval. It's a, is it a one-year grant? Is it one-year renewal? Two years. I think two it's every two years. Every two years, every year. two years we have to renew it, isn't it? Uh, I think that's right. Yes, I believe it's every two years. Hunter? No questions. I'll move that the request be granted. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes, and I think it has to be signed and back to them fairly quickly. So we'll need to get it signed I'll have it signed tonight, tonight and then back uh, to Brenda. Brenda's going to pick it up in the morning. Very good. Andrew, thank you. Thank you. We never say no to a grant. <laughs> exactly. Okay, next up, Lori Sharps is here. With a financial update, Lori, nice to see you. Okay, the first thing I'd like to look at is the revenue. Um, so we're, I don't feel like this is working, but. We can, all right, good. Um, so we're 25% of the way through um, the year as of this report, which was done on um, April 8th. We have some adjustments to revenue from the last report that have been made, which are based on actuals to date. Um, it's reasonable that these areas won't collect what the budgeted amount is. Um, the Sheriff's Department, we've made adjustments to fees, court security, and joint operations. And the adjustments that we made total $32,000. Um, and then one note in reference to Sheriff's fees specifically, um, this time last year, we were 37% higher than what we are this year in Sheriff's fees. Um, so it seemed appropriate to make some adjustments. In corrections, we have adjusted inmate reimbursement, work relief, and electronic monitoring um, by a small amount right now, but still different from my last report. We've reduced, 
reduce that overall $8,000. Um, currently, the work release program isn't running, but upon a conversation with Adam, I understand, I think he's planning on getting that started again. Um, in the nursing home is really where we're gonna see the biggest impact this time as compared to last report. Overall, there's been a reduction in revenue projections of $1 million. And we've adjusted that revenue to reflect not only year-to-date actuals, but also um, a census of the nursing home that we're not projecting to grow maybe as much as we thought we would have seen um, in part uh, due to hiring uh, issues there. Um, currently, we're reporting an overall or projecting an overall deficit of $917,000 in the revenue at year end. That doesn't mean that that may not change. You know, we may get stimulus money, you know, that um, we don't have a lot of sight into that, but currently that is what we're projecting for a year end. Well, normally, Lori, I think the board would be expressing some consternation regarding these projected shortfalls, but this these are not normal times. This is not a normal year. And we anticipate help from the American Rescue Plan, which is I think primarily what it's designed for. Uh, questions, discussion, commissioners? I have a question. So how far off of the estimated revenue number in the commissioner's recommended budget are we? I do not have the commissioner's recommended budget in front of me right now. Um, I don't think that does either. I don't have it with me. We, we have to okay. look it up. We could look it up and make a report on that next time. Yeah, I was going to ask the same question. Okay. I'd like to see the commissioner's estimated revenues uh, maybe on the same report. Yeah. Just so we can see what adjustments were made. That, yeah. As compared to what we're projecting. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. That but, would be helpful. Correct. For the board. Um, and I have another question regarding joint operations. I guess my understanding was that that revenue uh, was, uh, it was, was, a, was billed to a specific community. And I'm wondering why we're not collecting what we thought we were going to bill. Well, and you know, so I'm going to, I guess I'm thinking I'm going to backtrack on that one a little bit because as I was saying that in my mind, um, now I'm wondering if maybe for that particular one, they're behind a month potentially in getting us our payments. So that could be why they're. It, the um, joint operations is not the, is um, the marshal service mm -hmm. as opposed, I think, I don't know if you were thinking of uh, the town of Northfield that pays for dispatch services and uh, they just haven't paid us yet, but the joint okay. operations is just running behind okay. a little yeah. okay. and, and may pick up, but. Reimbursement That's right. for overtime. That's right. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Any further questions or discussion for Lori? Not on revenue. Okay. Um, moving on then to the expense, um, a significant change from last month is in the county maintenance budget projection, a bottom line deficit of $26,189, and that's due to a hot water replacement in the jail. Um, really in expenses, that is kind of the big story uh, this month as compared to last time. Other than that, we do still project corrections to have a year-end deficit due to things such as retirement payout and contracted nursing. Um, in nursing home admin, we have a, a projected deficit due to health insurance auditing, IT and D, which were budget cuts. Um, and we're currently projecting a year-end surplus of $207,182. Um, so uh, the one, if I, if I have to find a positive note, I will say that as Judy already reported, Deeds is doing great. <laughs> Um, they're bringing in some extra revenue, but there are a few areas that 
have small deficits projected on a line, as she noted, we're watching those, but these are really the big things. Um, overall, comparing the expense and the revenue, it's a projected deficit of $710,000. Say that again. The I was saying overall, com, the net deficit, comparing the revenue, oh, okay. yeah, and the expense is seven hundred and ten thousand dollars. Lori, um, can you just back that for a moment? Sure. So we can, that, that, that surplus figure two hundred seven one eighty two, mm -hmm. and and to what did you attribute that to? So the majority of that is in our contingency of two hundred thousand okay. dollars. So if you if you leave the contingency out right now, you're estimating that we'll have a little over seven thousand in surplus. Yes. And we're quarter quarter of the way through. So we are one unexpected disaster away from a big problem. We wouldn't want. One more. <laughs> one more After because hot, we just hot water heater. Right. We just had one. Yeah. Lori, do you know if we're um you know that the boiler wasn't unanticipated? Um did you see any deferred uh, maintenance going forward that we may not have anticipated that could add to the deficit? I haven't heard of anything. I don't know if you Deborah? um the only thing I can think of is the, uh, the water leak that we had at the courthouse. That uh, right now we've received enough money um, to cover all but four thousand dollars of the damage, and if we get our repairs done within one hundred and twenty or eighty days, then we'll get that four thousand. The one concern we have is if they find asbestos in the uh, they're replacing the carpets. In the county attorney's office, and if it turns out that they're that you remove the several layer layers of tile underneath the carpet that was ruined, um, and if it's asbestos, then it has to be remediated. And so we will go back to Primex and try to get more coverage for that. But that's an unknown at this point. When will we know if there is asbestos under those tiles? Uh, Dustin had been working with a contractor from. Uh, I don't, I, I don't remember where he said, but he has someone lined up to come and look at it. I just don't know the results yet. Do we know the likelihood that that hazard will be there? It's it seems very likely to me. Okay. But I know when we did the some replaced the linoleum here. It was uh, there. It was oh. in here. Yes. How much of the whole cost been for that that repair so far? Um, I I know we just got fifty two hundred. There's four thousand. Uh, we're we're hoping to get and uh, do you know what we paid Superior the the first two that were paid directly from Primex? No, I can't say, and I'm, I'm not going to remember if it was Superior. The other we we paid about three thousand dollars out. To oh, that was it. off. It was, yeah, because one of them was like five hundred dollars, and the other one was around twenty five hundred. Superior. All right, so maybe twelve thousand or so. Did you say Primex was paying the vendors directly? They paid two of the vendors directly. Okay. Yeah, it's helpful to us when they Absolutely. do that. Mm -hmm. So how much have we expended out of our operating budget? I don't think we paid don't think any we out have of any. our operating budget at this point. Right, that's true. We have not. Primex has paid directly. Okay, so the anticipation is this $3,000 or so that's going to come out of the operating budget? I mean, I thought that's what you just said. I'm sorry, I was answering what um, Primex had paid. That's what I thought we were talking about. So Primex has paid about three thousand dollars directly to the vendors, and then the claim was around ten thousand. Yeah, we're we're trying to um, if we pay the month if we pay the remainder of the uh, nine thousand mm -hmm. fifty two hundred plus the four thousand okay. plus whatever is. Um, for asbestos abatement, if we have to pay for that, so that that would really be a problem. It yeah. would be ideal if we can get the money from Primex, put it in a payable account, and pay it out of there. I don't think we can do that. Um, we we have a question out to the auditors about that. So, okay. 
Any other questions on the expense? Okay, you good? Right. Yeah. Okay, same here. Okay. Okay. Moving on to the cash flow, um, our plan closed on April 9th. The results of the RFP that were put out went to the treasurer and the award was granted to Northway. Northway had offered two options. One, a um, 7.1 million fully funded at 0.49% or 7.1 million as a drawdown um, at 0.59%. Uh, um, the draw option was chosen anticipating that would save some interest uh, as we'll only draw down on that as, as we need to. And then uh, we did take a $2 million draw on the ninth when it closed and which is reflected in the cash flow. Um, and then we anticipate needing to draw again um, right now toward the end um, of July. It's something that I did bring kind of last minute, but I, I have the results of the RFP and all of the banks um, and what they offered if anybody's interested in having that. And we maybe should have passed that along when they came in. Um, but if you're interested in that, I can give those out. No? Boy, what were those um, those two interest quotes? One was 5.9. What was the second one? Uh, 0 0.49 and 0 0.59. 0 0.49, 0 0.59. Right. We have found out that our, um, I don't know if you remember that last year we had because they changed since ProShare 1 and ProShare 2, we had to front money last year. And we we fully intended to have to do that again this year. It turns out that uh, Belknap County is going to be better off moving into the ProShare 2 group, uh, which we, we just were <laughs> just informed of that. And I guess the, the good part of that is we're still expecting it still looks like we'll get the same amount of revenue about 2 million or 2.1 and we will not have to front the money so that was one thing about pro share too we just get the money just get a check or a deposit so that's good news that should help with our cash flow if we had known that a month and a half ago um, it might have made a significant difference in our borrowing deb do we know if the other counties are using the same procedure with the pro share too uh, I don't think so. There were three counties in ProShare 1. I think we're the only one that they that is being recommended move to ProShare 2. But I think in the long run, the uh, Department of Health and Human Services seems to think that uh, the CMS is going to want everyone back to ProShare 2. They didn't, they didn't really like ProShare 1, apparently. Any questions on the cash flow? I, I'll make an adjustment in regards to not having to um, front the pro share. I wasn't sure if that was final or not. Yeah, it shouldn't affect the bottom line. No, right? no, no, but it just looks, yeah. It'll look better. It'll look nicer. Any other questions on the cash flow? I have none. Where do I? Okay, then the last um, piece you have is just the receivable balance. Um, we collected another $15,000 of the 2020 balance, which um, is always, of course, good news, and just steady collections at 97%. And was there any questions on that? That's just about the target anyway, isn't it, that 97%? Yes. All right. Okay. okay, thank you. Lori, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, commissioners. Uh, any other business to discuss? I've, I've got a thought that I just want to throw out for consideration. I mean, with the very substantial amount of money that is coming through the stimulus uh, program. I think it would be appropriate to have a uh, citizen's advisory committee get some idea of what 
populace might want that. And $10.9 million is a lot of money. It's 11, it's 11.8, Deborah, total? 11.8 is the last I heard. It's yeah. tells you how good my memory is. <laughs> good enough, I'm sure. I knew it was a lot of money, <laughs> but uh, I mean, we don't have to do anything right now because we don't have the money and we don't know what the guidelines are going to be. But uh, I do know that uh, at least Stratford County is pretty far along in planning what they hope that they'll be able to do. Now, they're getting a lot more money. They're getting Greater close population. To, yeah, they're getting close to 30 million. And you can build, build a lot with 30 million. That's the system thought that we have. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's a great thought. I, and I, I know we, at a prior meeting, we had talked about setting up some sort of a, of a joint committee with, uh, with residents as well as delegation members and our, and our commissioner. So I, I mean, I guess we thought we were moving forward and I don't know if we needed to take a formal vote to set that up or, but I, I agree. I think that there should be some sort of a, of a stakeholder committee gives, uh, brings presentations back to the board to, to fund. And, and I, I'm not suggesting we need to do anything right now. Yeah. Just give it thought. I mean, there's, there's plenty of money here. The, roughly one third of our budget will be coming in with the rescue plan, one third of the total budget. And uh, I think it's important, uh, Commissioner Taylor, I certainly concur with, with both board members uh, that the public should have a voice and the public should have input. Um, ultimately, it's all it's all taxpayer money, except this bundle comes from Washington. But uh, I think the board is in agreement that there should be an open and a transparent process to how the money should be apportioned going forward. Uh, thank you for that, Commissioner Taylor. Uh, what else do we have? Any other business to discuss? The only other thing that I uh, just jotted down is uh, Due to the governor's recent uh, announcement today that the state mandate mask mandate is uh, in a sunsetting tomorrow, and I don't know if we want to discuss what the county's policy wants to be either going forward in the short run uh, on county property. I I think Commissioner Waring that it, I think all of us sense that day by day we get a little closer to some type of, some semblance of normalcy. Uh, I had a discussion with Deborah earlier today. Um, New Hampshire is getting close to a 50% vaccination rate. Um, that's not close enough to give the state and the region herd immunity, but we're certainly getting there. Um, I, I think at this point, I like to take my bearing and guidance from, from the governor's edicts. Um, I think the governor feels comfortable enough that uh, deaths are low enough, hospitalizations are low enough where uh, the hospitals are really crowded now, not so much because of COVID, but because of deferred elective procedures. So, um, Hunter, what say you? The infection rate is not going down. I mean, if you, if you watch what's happening in New Hampshire, I mean, we're having uh, the infection rate is actually up six weeks ago. And I mean, quite frankly, I think it makes sense to be as careful as we can be. I would leave the policy as it exists now in place at least until we can see a definite downturn uh, in the infection. I, mean, I, I just found out today that Barnstead has closed their municipal building. They've got an outbreak uh, in Barnstead. Often, two weeks ago, closed for a week because of an outbreak. So, I mean, it, we're not out of the woods. Uh, and I know that uh, masks are not popular. I'm sitting here fogged up. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like them. But, uh, I mean, if it were left to me, that's what I would do. I think it's reasonable <clears throat> taking our guidance from Governor Sununu in that while he's lifting the mandate tomorrow, uh, his offices are still recommending uh, masking 
and distancing and the usual, the usual precautions that have been practiced by the CDC guidelines. Um, is that something that the board can agree with that it's our recommendation that when appropriate to mask and when appropriate and when possible to distance and to also continue with um, the sanitization procedures that have been followed. And uh, I, I think it might be the board's recommendation that caution remains the byword as we continue to uh, get vaccinated every day and we gain on it. Commissioner Waring. Yeah, I, I, I'm fine with that. I just, I just want the department heads to have some direction from us, the, the board of commissioners, so it can be consistent across the county, uh, whatever our policy is. And I don't know if we've actually ever had one stated to this point because we probably didn't need one because the governor's state mandate would override anything we did. So that's why I raise it that I think that to give clear guidance to, to our okay. department heads and our, our staff. That's good. Um, based on what Commissioner Wearing has said, my recommendation would be to keep the precautions in place until further notice. And that would go for obviously all the departments, especially nursing and corrections. But yeah, they, have got, they have, obviously the nursing home has a whole separate set of rules they're following that they'll have to keep following. And I think the other uh, facilities have have erred on the side of caution and have all set policies uh, up, um, explaining how, under what circumstances you can come in. You know, here it's you have to either wear a mask if you cannot maintain six feet of distance. That's what we've been doing for a year now. Um, then perhaps it's the recommendation of this board that nothing would change within the county for now until further notice. Does that sound like a safe approach, Hunter? I agree with that. Okay, good. Then we can leave it at that for now. Uh, we're meeting again in a couple of weeks and we can certainly revisit that based on what's going on around us. Agreed. Okay. And what the infection rates, great. Okay, um, we can move on to uh, the public. Any public comments? Any members here from the public here in person or some Zooming from home who would like to uh, make some remarks? Seeing that there are no public comments, um, I guess we can entertain a motion to, I, non -public, to, to go into non-public. Right, which would require roll call vote. So. Oh. And we need to cite the basis for non-public. So you would be looking for a motion to enter non-public session in accordance with 91A colon three paragraph two subparagraph J and E. So moved. Second. Deborah, would you call the roll please? Yes, I will. Uh, Commissioner Spanos? Yes. Commissioner Waring? Yes. Commissioner Taylor? Yes. Okay, you're in. Oh, did you give me that? Okay, all right, thank you. All right, yeah. Oh, yeah, I have her here. Okay, I got it. 